पढ़ते पढ़ते सर मुहामुश्किलिटी छात्री छहुदिन आगे আপনার কাছে মাস্টার্স করার সময় আপনার ছাত্র ছিল ও আচ্ছা আমি পিএইচডি করেন ও আচ্ছা 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 তো সেজন্য মনে হলো না রেকর্ডিং হচ্ছে পুরো তবে লাইভ হচ্ছে ঠিক আছে ওটা শুরু করুন নাকি চাক দেখো চাকতে বাজে জাস্ট চাকতে বাজে সো আই থিং দ্য স্টার্ট স্টার্ট করছেন হ্যাঁ So Ashish, you are ready? Yes, sir. Day? Yes, sir. Okay. So uh, a little bit uh, uh, this introduction. So good afternoon, my colleagues and students at ICS, and my friends and colleagues who have joined uh, online at ICS. That is Indian Association for the Cultivation of Science, as part of the celebration for the 75th anniversary of Indian Independence. and which has been named by the government of india as the azadi ka amrit mahotsav we have arranged a series of seminar lectures and webinars and today the first lecture will be delivered by mm-hmm. professor dr mm-hmm. varish introduction one mm-hmm. thank you ha uni ekta introduction dicchen apnar his activities and contributions Uh, now to say a few words about uh, professor priyadaranjan re i would say that uh, in the history of the last century of our institute he is an important personality like many of the stalwarts in indian science and he played a very important role in shaping the scientific profile of the institute at the capacity of honorary secretary honorary president and director During the period of both the both independent years, he is also founder fellow of the Indian National Science Academy, and we are extremely fortunate to have Professor Devabrath Banerjee to deliver this lecture. Professor Banerjee was a direct PhD student of Professor Priyadaran Jyotiray, and he is also the first PhD scholar of the inorganic chemistry section of our institute. Uh, Professor Banerjee is known as an internationally renowned authority in the field of reaction dynamics of metal complexes. He was the co-worker of famous chemists like R. G. Pearson, F. Basolo, and holding the prestigious Chair Professor of Chemistry at Calcutta University. He taught many generations of MSc students, wrote about 200 scientific articles, five textbooks in inorganic chemistry. Guided more than twenty uh, PhD students, 
and he's also the recipient of numerous national and international awards like the fellow of the royal society of chemistry london and he delivered lectures at the prestigious international scientific forum he served the indian chemical society as the honorary secretary during 1972 1975 and as the president of the society uh, during 1988 and 89 today uh, professor banerjee is very young at the age of 92 and he gladly accepted our request to deliver this lecture on priyadaranjan ray personally i am fortunate to be student in his class at alger university like many other uh, colleagues and friends who have joined today so with this brief remarks i invite uh, professor banerjee to deliver to this lecture sir please sir apni hello yes sir we are listening hello ha sir shunte pacche bolo হ্যালো আমি বলবো এখন শুরু করবো প্রিয়দারঞ্জন রায় ইস ইন্ডিয়ান despite my age i'm 92 year now very weak health and bad state of eyesight because that gives me another opportunity perhaps the last one in my life to to pay my homage and obeisance to my gurudev a life that is long spent is a long life said leonardo da vinci this is actually true of priyadaranjan who lived 36 days short of his 96th birthday and yet re- re- remained creative almost to uh, to uh, 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 till the end of his life according to michael faraday i quote the scientist should be a man willing to listen to every suggestion but determined to judge for himself he should not be a respecter of persons but of things truth should be his primary objective as a dedicated chemist priyadaranjan amply fulfilled this criteria during four decades of his research and teaching career first in the university college of science from 1919 to 1952 then in the association till 1958 he reared two generations of inorganic chemists many of whom held important positions in their life this creation of a school of inorganic chemistry in the country was no less his important contribution than his own contributions in research just as prabhulla chandra is duly credited for creating and nurturing the indian school of chemistry professor rai is equally credited for nurturing the modern school of indian inorganic chemistry in india it was since my school days that i was familiar with the name of priyadaranjan because his one of his nephew was my classmate then at st xavier's college i developed an interest in inorganic chemistry so after passing my bsc examination with honors in chemistry i joined the university college of science for the masters degree course with inorganic chemistry as my special paper and as per the provision in those days i also opted for a project tour it is here that i had the opportunity of having professor rai as my supervisor then after passing my msc examination i on his advice joined the indian association for the cultivation of science as a research scholar in fact the first research scholar of the department of inorganic chemistry in 1951 and research work started functioning department started functioning since 51 after i joined as the first research scholar 
And three weeks later, Dr. P.C. Banerjee, who was the first research officer. In 1952, after retiring from his service in the University College of Science, when Dr. Hemant Shah was the director, at the invitation of Dr. Shah, Professor I became professor and head of the Department of Inorganic Chemistry, in which position he continued till 58. Meanwhile, I submitted my thesis for the PhD degree in 1954, and I was the first alumni of the department to submit the PhD thesis. Then, after completing my PhD the postdoctoral assignment at Northwestern University with Fred Basolo and Ralph Pearson, who pioneered research in in a new branch, namely the mechanisms of the actions of metal complexes, I joined the association again as a faculty in my capacity as a research officer, in which position I continued till March 60, with a break of 10 months in 1959, where I was senior scientific officer at the National Chemical Laboratory Pune in New at Pune. Now I will uh, uh, refer to the period, the first two decades of the dead of the, of the decades uh, of the since the inception of the uh, inorganic chemistry department, which information is uh, totally absent in the website of the association. <coughs> Um, during the six years that Professor Rai was professor and head of the department, as I said, he joined in, uh, uh, in 1952 after retirement of university, from the University College of Science as Sarathanath Paji, professor of chemistry. Professor Shah died in February 56 and he had to take up the responsibility of the director also. And he had continued uh, to, to look after the, uh, the, the activities of the department. And during the six year period, eight of us got PhD degree under his supervision. And my tenure as research officer, as I have said already, was up to March 64 during which four of my students got PhD degree. One then did postdoctoral in the Imperial College London and then become chief chemist, geological survey of India, the Western region, stationed at Jaipur. The second one became professor of Kalani University. Third one migrated to USA and retired as a faculty member there. And the fourth one did another doctorate from Imperial College London and uh, joined uh, as chief chemist, a private manufacturing, chemical manufacturing concern in Mumbai. Now, after I joined as research officer, Professor uh, uh, Rai gave me the full freedom to work independently and publish independently. In fact, he was also one of the Prabhupada Chandra's two of the most favorite students whom Prabhupada Chandra granted this privilege. And this privilege Prabhupada Chandra granted also to his second, another student, only Jain Mukherjee. All the others had their publications jointly with Professor Rai. Now the independence I got in carrying out research, led to the publication of a, uh, of a paper in the Journal of Inorganic Nuclear Chemistry in 1958 by my first research scholar, K.K. Tripathi, and which was not only his first research paper on mechanisms of ligand replacement in palladium complexes, it was also a first research paper in the field of mechanisms of reactions of metal complexes, 
communicated from any laboratory in India. Now I'm saying all this to, to, to just to, share, to, to say that there was profuse activity in the department, despite of many odds, like uh, lack of funds. Uh, there, the annual grant in those days was only the recurring grant of 6,000 and no, inflow of non recurring grant was also irregular. Yet we were able to publish results of quality, both from my group and Professor Rai's group that were cited in many of the international literature, such as the annual reports of the progress of chemistry. <clears throat> now, Professor Rai, was born on uh, you know, before I say I, 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 I learn I, I rather I digress a little and talk about some other aspects of his man. You see, despite the fact that he received international recognition and during the peak period of his activities, of his career, there was hardly any appointment made to a chair in the in you know, in chemistry in the in any Indian university without seeking his opinion and views. And speaking about him in 1961 in a private communication, John Miller said, "You have reasons to be proud for what you have done for your country." But he remained a silent worker throughout his life and kept it wholly isolated from the ruling coterie with vested interests and shunned publicity and psychophancy and, uh, and lobbying, which are essential requisites for getting recognition many recognitions in this country. Thus, although he was, gave, he was elected general, the sectional president of the chemistry section of the Indian Science Congress session at Bangalore in 1932, he was not elected the general president. Now in this connection, I find, I find it necessary worth quoting what the Nobel, some Nobel Prize winner said about the award of the Nobel Prize which appeared in an article in the April issue of nine, 2009 of the monthly journal Chemistry World published by the Royal Society UK. I quote, increased lobbying is necessary to win the Nobel and since selectors are humans, the selection process might not always result in top scientists winning. Sometimes Nobel winners are not the most deserving scientists. An article on science in India by John Maddox, published in Nature, 1984, April 12 issue, is also worth noting in this connection, as well as an article, The Million Dollar Question, whether prizes and awards help or hinder scientific progress, which was published in the November 280 issue of Chemistry World. In the words of Sir Prabhulo Chandra Ray, I quote, the Priyadar Heap, Priyadar Rai, is regarded as an acknowledged authority on complexness and valency, and also microchemistry, and it is my practice to submit my own papers to his criticism and judgment before they are contributed to the chemical societies for publication. My presidential addresses at the annual meetings of the Indian Chemical Society of 1926 and 1929 are based mainly upon his ideas and suggestions. A more, a more silent and unobtrusive worker is seldom to be met he has already published a score of papers, any one of which if submitted to any university would win him a doctorate. 
but he has not yet made his mind to do so. Events are of two kinds, the silent and the noisy. Piyadha Ranjan's work come under the former category, unquote. Even after his retirement for service, he continued to remain creative through his numerous writings, both in English and Bengali languages, on a variety of issues in diverse fields like science, society, religion, and philosophy. Neither his age nor his virtual blindness during the last 15 years of his life could deter him from remaining creative, utilizing his brain power. These articles also show his excellent command of both English and Bengali languages. His total number of publications are four books in Bengali, of which one is Vigyan of Vishwagot, a Vishwarthi publication, another is Roshan or Roshan or Roshan or Shomaj. The Vishwarthi publication, and another is Bigan of Sanskrit. And third one, and the fourth one is Otikai Onur of Kahini, that is the novel story of macromolecules published by the uh, West Bengal. Um, uh, yeah, well, I would rather say the Bengali name. Bongyo began position. And there is a, another book which was published by a publisher. And he wrote 72 articles in Bengali on various issues published in many of the popular uh, monthly uh, journals. His books are eight, one of which is The Theory of Valency and Structure of Properties of Chemical Compounds of which I am, the co I am his co-author, published by the Indian Association for the Cultivation of Science in 1969. This was indeed a drastically revised and enlarged edition of his uh, booklet 80, of 80 pages on the theory of valence and structure of compounds, which was his text of his Kojimir professorship lecture of the Indian Association for the Cultivation of Science. He also delivered the Mahindra Al-Sharkar of the Association. <clears throat> now there are, his research public, his articles in Bengali are 40, I'm mean, sorry, articles in English are 40, and there are seven, 17 review articles. And the original research papers in 157, it is not possible to talk about all the publications. So I will make a broad overview, present a broad overview of his major scientific, active, uh, scientific publications, many of which have earned him international recognition. And it is worth noting that two of his most important work which are still cited in contemporary literature. One being the twist mechanism or assimilation of twist fillets. Another is on silver, the complex of ethylene dibigoride, were published in the Journal of the Indian Chemical Society. In fact, uh, since the Indian Chemical Society was founded in 1934, he published many of his work in, in this, the Journal of the Society so that the Joyland and had in those days a very high impact factor. Unfortunately, most of the good workers of today uh, prefer to publish their papers in, out, in foreign journals and not the Journal of the Indian Chemical Society. The result is that there has been a steep decline in the impact factor of the journal over the years. During the 70s, it was the impact factor of Journal of the Indian Chemical Society was, was much higher than that of Indian Journal of Chemistry. Now, since the 90s, the position has been entirely reversed. Anyway, now I will just give a brief account of his scientific activities. Right, 
his first research work was, you see, he, 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 he was born, he, he was born on 16 January 1888 in a landlord family in the village Noapara, a district of Chittagong yes. now, which is now in Bangladesh. And he was the eighth descendant of a renowned Ayurvedic physician of, of Vishnu Padurai. He had his uh, primary education in the village school. Then he passed the entrance examination, which later named became matriculation examination conducted by Calcutta University from the Chicago Government College School in first division, securing a merit scholarship. Then he passed the FA examination, that is the intermediate examination from Chicago Government College in the year 1906. And the same year, he joined Presidency College in the BA class for the BA degree course. At Presidency College, he had among his distinguished uh, teachers, many eminent educationists, of which two most towering personalities were Prabhupada Chandra Rai and Sar Jagadish Chandra Bosch. They influenced a lot his, his future career. After passing the MA examination in 1911, in first class, securing, in standing first and securing two gold medals. He started his research career in Prabhupada Chandra's laboratory and published his first paper in 1912 with H. and his classmate as a co-author on the reactions of hydrogen and hydroxylamine with ferrizanite and the use and their use in, in estimation of hydrazine and ferrizanite. Unfortunately, on in the month of August, uh, same year, he met with an accident as a result of which he lost his left eye completely. There were injuries in the right eye and in various parts of the body that for which he had to discontinue his research activities for two years. In 1914, he joined City College as professor of chemistry and continued there till 1918. Now, during this period, another illustrious son of Bengal and visionary, Sarashwath Mukherjee, who was vice chancellor of Calcutta University, was responsible for the establishment of the University College of Science in 1914. On his invitation, Prabhupada Chandra joined the Institute as Taraknath Pali professor and head of the department of chemistry in the year 1916 after his retirement from government service in Presidency College. Then at the suggestion of Prabhula Chandra, Sarashu Dosh, appointed Priyadaranjan as assistant Taraknath Pali professor. In fact, this post was held by the professor. I was the first and the last person to hold this post. And here, Prabhula Chandra gave him the fullest freedom to organized the inorganic chemistry division. Joining the University College of Science in 1919, he started his research work and again with vigor. And within the course of next three years, he published three papers in the Journal of the Chemical Society London with P.V. Sharkar as the author. The third paper of this series that was published in 1922 was on the 
studies on formation of polyhalides by the hydrogen ion in aqueous solution, which they studied by partition method. <clears throat> At the persuasion of Sir Prabhu Lusan Zurai, Priyadarajan went to Europe in the year 1928 with a host traveling fellowship of Calcutta University to carry out research, carry out and spent one year in the laboratory of the famous inorganic chemist of this time, that time, Fred Seyfrem, at Bird in Switzerland, where he carried out studies on spectroscopic properties of some lanthanides and published three papers jointly with Ephraim in the prestigious German journal Berichte. Then he spent three months in the laboratory of Frederick Emich, a microchemist of fame in Austria. Austria, and then after visiting several other centers of research in Europe and in England, he finally returned to Calcutta in 1930. Next one. His significant contributions are in fields like magnetochemistry, formation chemistry, analytical chemistry, including microanalytical chemistry. And this is a broad classification, I am saying. Uh, all the publications, all his publications are in general in the field of coordination chemistry. His contribution in magnetochemistry made him an international acquired pioneer in the field. The first publication in this area was on the magnetic properties of complex compounds and their electronic constitution published by Rai and Bohr in the Journal of the Indian Chemical Society, 1928, volume 5, 497. Next. Another significant one is magnetic moments of copper complexes, and which were on the basis of the formula were apparently all four coordinated. And he found that it's possible to classify these complexes in broadly into two classes, those which, which have uh, they, rather dark red, brown, and uh, black colors have lower moments and those who have uh, have uh, green and, and uh, light violet colors have higher moments. And similar studies on cobalt complexes were also made by S. V. Ghosh. Now the classification he made um, based on the concept of the then prevailing concept of Pauling's wells bond theory, he proposed that the, those who have a lower moment the range of about 1.73 to 1.84 are what was called the inner orbital complexes in which the 3D orbitals involved in forming bonding that is GSP2. And since there are nine electrons in the uh, D level, one has to be promoted to 4D. And this exposed electron, the field, contribution to the exposed electron is suppressed in the field of the other, uh, in, in the crystal field of the, of the molecule. And in the other case, those with the higher moment, these are outer orbital complexes, so that the, the unpaired electron remains in the inner level and its contribution is not quenched. While this explanation is not tenable, I will come to that soon. Uh, the classification into these two classes is really significant. It, it is worth noting that for the magnetic moment, the formula is square root of n into n plus two plus l into l plus one. The first term represents the contribution due to the spin of the unpaired electron. Second one, the contribution of the 
orbital uh, moment of the electron. According to B.M. Bosch, in his paper published in 1927, and similar results were published by E.C. Stoner in 1929, and hence known as this Bosch-Stoner formula. In the case of the 3D metal ions, the L contribution is negligible, so that the moment is given by square root of n into n plus 2. So if there is one electron, it should be 1.73. And the copper complexes, the copper complexes, which had all this black, brown, red, green, yellow, and violet colors, blue violet colors, have moments in the lower range, almost starting from almost the spin only value, as it is called, uh, where the, there is uh, hard, no contribution due to orbital motion. And while those of the green, blue, and blue violet colors, light blue violet, have moments in the higher range. Determination of crystal structure of compounds of these two classes have now established. The former have square planar structure, while the latter have yarn taylor distorted octahedral structure. And complexes of copper, that is D9, cannot have any orbital contribution. The fact that some of the complexes, the moments, and higher than the spin only value of 1.73 is due to spin orbit interaction. And this, for the spin orbit interaction, the contribution is dependent on the ligand field strength. In case of D9, as the DQ value, that is the ligand field strength increases, the contribution decreases. So that the or spin orbit contribution is lower in the case of the square planar complexes formed by strong field ligands like bigonide and thalocyanin. On the other hand, the high spin complexes, the, those who have the higher spin uh, values, uh, the, uh, the, the DQ value is smaller. So the orbital contribution a spin orbital contribution is higher, and therefore they have the higher range values. <clears throat> S.P. Ghosh made similar studies on square planar complexes of cobalt and observed moments. S.P. Ghosh made similar observations and they found moments. Cobalt complexes studied by S.P. Ghosh were all square planar. This acyl acetone, ethylene diamine, bigonide, ethylene dibigonide. They have strong yellow colors. And from analogy, their crystal structure have not been determined so far. But from analogy with the copper and nickel, they are square planar, which, is, which are also apparent for the formula. For square planar complexes of cobalt 2, which is D7, D7. According to the standard formula for the, uh, for the magnetic moment, see, because for D7, L is 2, it should be square root or half. And uh, if there's a one unpaired electron, n equal to one, l equal to two, and that will lead to square root of half, which is three. Now, most of the values observed in these cases were about 2.7 board magneton, which means that the orbital contribution is partly quenched, suppressed in these complexes. Next. <coughs> Another important contribution application of magnetic moment as well as chemical reactions in establishing constitution of a cobalt complex was that of nitrous of pentamine cobalt 
having a charge of two plus. Only two varieties of this complex are known. One is a black one, another is a red one. The black one is paramagnetic and the red one is diamagnetic. On reacting the black with dilute hydrochloric acid, there is formation, evolution of nitric oxide and formation of cold hexacuone, the pink colored hexacuone and ammonium salt. On the other hand, red one is resistant to dilute hydrochloric acid. It reacts only with concentrated hydrochloric acid, forming chloropentamine cobalt and evolution of nitrous oxide. That means here the NO by, by intramolecular electron transfer from the cobalt two to NO, the cobalt two has become cobalt three, NO has become NO minus. On protonation, it forms H2N2O2, which breaks up into water and nitrous oxide as you know, being unstable. And this is how we prove the constitution of the two varieties of nitrous open cobalt. This was uh, again. This was published by uh, Ryan S. P. Ghosh, Shailaja Prasad Ghosh, who later became professor of Patna University. Uh, uh, Ray, professor I summarized, gave a summarized account of his contributions in the field of biochemistry in the Professor G.M. Bose Memorial Lecture of the Bose Institute, Calcutta, published in the Transactions of the Bose Society, also in the Santishwar Bhatnagar Memorial Lecture of the Indian National Science Academy, published in the Proceedings of the Indian National Science Academy. <clears throat> in recognition of his, his contributions in magnetochemistry, Professor Wilhelm Klein, Director of the Inorganic Institute, University of Munster, Germany, who was a well known authority in the field of magnetochemistry, commented as follows I quote, and give an account of the modern developments in, that, in the application of magnetochemistry. I cannot conclude without referring to the contributions of the Indian workers in the field. Mention of names like Ramon Krishnan and Ray P. Ray will be, in my opinion, suffice for the purpose. Another field in which he made substantial contribution was new and analytical methods using organic complex forming agents such as rubianic acid, dithyroxamide, dimarcotothiobarazol, which is known as bisphuthiol, Picolinic hospitalin 2 carboxylic acid and quinolin 2 carboxylic acid and their derivatives, cysteine, uh, derivative amidoxins, hydroxamic acid, salicylic acid derivatives, etc., which can detect and estimate metals not only at the micro but even at the micro level by photometric methods. The most important and a very um, fascinating work in this field was his work on metal ruby and its dithyroxamide. He studied the formation of copper, nickel, and cobalt complexes, compounds of dithyroxamide in 1926. That work was carried out by his student, Rony Mohan Rai who later became a popular, very popular professor at Bangawashi College, Calcutta. The compounds were all very dark colored. Copper was dark green, nickel was dark violet, blue violet, cobalt was brown, red brown. He developed, and the metal is, it is the, the reagent is so sensitive that can, it can detect copper even at three parts per million level. He subsequently developed a preferred chromatographic spot test technique for the detection of copper, cobalt, and nickel in, in a mixture. He moistened a filter paper strip with a solution dithyroxamide made 
ammonia cult. Uh, it dissolves in alcohol. So it was an alcoholic ammonia cult solution of dichloroxide. And on that spot, he's, he's, he, he placed, on placing a, a, one or two drops of the test solution, immediately there is a green ring patch at the center, surrounded by a red, reddish brown ring, followed by a blue violet ring. This is because, although all the three are insoluble, the most insoluble is copper, followed by cobalt, covered by nickel. The green patch is due to copper, the red brown is due to cobalt, and the blue violet is nickel. Now here, I should mention that in a lecture that he delivered in the association under the auspices of the Institution of Chemist Calcutta, he demonstrated the sensitivity of the ruminic acid. He boiled ordinary water with copper chips. Copper is, does not dissolve even in dilute acids, as you know, except in oxidizing acids like nitric acid. But because of presence of small amount of electrolytes, and assisted by the oxygen of the air, on boiling, very small quantity, some micro quantity of copper goes into the water. But the amount of copper in this water cannot be detected by any reason. In his lecture, he took a, a portion of that boiled water, cooled it, then added a, an alcoholic, a few drops of an alcoholic solution of rubianic acid, dithyroxamide, and then a few drops of aqueous ammonia. And immediately there was formed a very faint greenish tint due to copper rubianic. No reagent is known that can detect copper at that level. This is, you see, the highly polymeric nature of the metal rubianates is because their coordination polymers. This is known from subsequent crystallographic studies. Next. At the association in the inorganic department, Professor Rai and his student, a Kerala fellow from Zezevier, used rubianic acid and his derivatives for the spectrometer determination of many metals during the period 57 to 58. And they published also a review article in the year 1961, which was in fact his last research publication. Uh, Xavier as the co-author on the use of rubric acid in derivatives of chelating agents and analytical reagents. During using quinaldinic acid, Rai and several of his co-workers in the 30s, during 33, 39, and uh, up to 33 to 39, with co-workers M.K. Bosch, A.K. Mozumdar, A.K. Mozumdar was later became a professor head of the department of Jadavpur University, and again vice chancellor also of Jadavpur University. J. Gupto, he became Deputy Director of National Chemical Laboratory Pune, N. K. Dutt, who was his colleague and lecturer at University College, and he became professor and head of the Department of Organic Chemistry of Indian Association since from 1962 to 1973. P. C. Sharkar developed useful methods for the separation and estimation of several metals, which were published in several, seven papers, three of which published in the German journal Zedanal Chem and four in the journal Microchem. Professor Rai used quinaldenic acid for estimating zinc content of snake venom, where it is present in very small concentration. Next. Complex formation by amidoxins with metal ions were studied during 51 to 54 by me under his supervision, which I used subsequently for spectrophotonic determination of titanium uranium. 
and this work was all carried out in the inorganic department, chemistry department, the Indian Association for the Cultivation of Science. Salicyl hydroxamic acid was used for spectrophotometric determination of iron, vanadium, molybdenum, and uranium by Ajit Shankar, Bhaduri, and P. Rai, which was published in the German Journal in 1956. Ajit Shankar, Bhaduri, retired as the director of the test, National Test of Zalibu. Two oximino salicylic acid was used for spectrophotic determination of uranium by Oshit Rai, who was then uh, a lecturer in Jadavpur University. And he also published a few other papers as co-author of Professor Rai, but he committed suicide at a pretty young age. Salicylamide was used for spectrophotomy estimation of uranium by A.K. Chakraborty, D. Shen, and P. Rai. A.K. Chakraborty became professor of chemistry at Jadavpur University. He was one year junior to me academically, and Levobrotha Shen was two years senior to me. D. Shen, he was also related to him uh, as a the grandson in law. Uh, and D. Shen became the brother Shen. He became professor and dean of student affairs of IIT Kharagpur. He's still alive. Among the many students of Professor Rai, myself, D. Shen, and Adel Dotto are the only three who are still alive. In recognition of his contributions in microanalytical chemistry, he was elected an editorial collaborator for publication on authoritative comprehensive treatise, of which William Bogart of Leipzig University was the editor. This, this appeared in a, uh, was published in a German language. He was nominated, it was in recognition of his contributions in Photometric methods of microanalysis that he was nominated in 1951 by the International Union of Pure and Applied Chemistry as a member of a seven member committee to prepare a critical and comprehensive report on spectrophotometric methods of analysis. He continued in this capacity for eight years. That is, the assignment began in the, while he was in the University College of Science, and he, that continued while he was at the Indian Association for the Cultivation of Science. But after eight years, when he was renominated, he declined and suggested that someone younger should be inducted. This shows his modesty, which was rather rare, even among his contemporaries. Now, since 1937, a series of seminal publications on complexes of metals with bigonides, uh, a substituted bigonides and dibigonides emerged from his group. And this activity has continued while he was at the Indian Association for the Cultivation of Science as well. They included not only preparation and characterization of such complexes, and their use in stabilizing less common oxidation states, they some are also useful in analytical methods. Next. Elucidation of the plausible constitution of metal bigonides was made by chemical methods, for which his co worker, Oeske Shiddanto, who was in the government service at Presidency College, then he was at IIT Kharagpur. And finally, he was a professor head of Bardoan University. Work on, he was also one of, our, one of my teachers, because in those days, we had those in the University College of Science had to attend classes at Presidency College and vice versa. Work on by building of the said was continued by M. M. Manoj Rai, Bilishar Manaji, Inarsh and Gupta subsequently. Manoj Rai made 
uh, stable bicarbonate complexes of manganese three and manganese four. Uh, but he, he he joined as assistant professor at IIT Kharagpur, but died prematurely because of cancer. While the finer details of the constitution of the metal bicarbonate complexes known now from X-ray crystallographic studies and for his and and UV spectroscopic studies. The UV spectroscopic studies were carried out by his student Dijen while he was professor at IIT Gorakhpur and published in the Journal of Biochemical Research. Differ slightly. There is not much of a major difference. The difference is only with respect to the distribution of a N not nitrogen bound proton. Now, the structure of the bicarbonate, metal bicarbonate that we know today on the basis of all extra crystallographic work and use spectrometry is this. While Professor Rai proposed that these protons, these nitrogen are deprotonated and the protons get locked up by the basic NH2 group. So that was the only difference. And this was because he found that on treatment of these complexes with dilute alkali, they're easily deprotonated. Just as ammonia gets deprotonated and forms ammonia. So that was the reason. But anyway, from, a, from the latest information that we have available from physical method, so the difference is only in the positions of the two hydrogens. Next. Determination of stabilities, thermodynamic stabilities of the metal bionic complexes show that they are far more stable than the analogous ethylene diamine complexes. This work was done by my one year senior in uh, academically AKD, and uh, the chromium work was done by me, and uh, Ashudev Das Sharma uh, did similar work on plus two metal of the bisbiguronic complexes. Ashudev Sharma migrated to USA and became a faculty member there. However, in terms of kinetic inertness, bicarbonate was far less inert than the corresponding ethyl diamine complex. The reason for this, as given by us, by me and my student, B. Chakroti, who became a professor at Colony University in a perfect public journal, you know, with nuclear chemistry, I guess, like term. I guess, like term. Now, this is because, you see, even in the chelated form, the bionide ligand can get protonated, forming the conjugate acid, for example, any, any of these. Two. And once the conjugate has, once this is protonated, that weakens this MN bond, and that facilitates the dissociation. So despite the fact that they are highly stable, they are much more, much less inert, can it let's react faster. G. Banerjee and R. L. Dotto carried out studies on metal complexes of Guane Lurias. G. Banerjee carried out this work while Professor Rai was in the University College of Science. R. L. Dotto, who became Professor Bardwan, carried out this work at the association. And similar studies on Guane Thyroidias, Dyson, and Diamonds was carried out at the supervision of Kichok Korti and he said, put that. <clears throat> Chemistry of bicarbonates, and I see in view of his immense contributions in the field of bicarbonate complexes, he was invited by the editor of Chemical Reviews to write a new article on Chemistry of Bicarbonates, Dance and Diamonds, published in the Chemical Reviews, 1963. On reading this link, Professor Beck, sent a letter to Professor Rai, in which he expressed, I quote, I am extremely interested to your work on the chemistry of bicarbonate complexes. So I was excited to do your impressive review, which appears to me a real gold mine. Now, in 1912, Werner proposed a mechanism for the racemization of triskelates, in which he postulated that this occurs by a reversible opening and closing of a chelate ring. However, in 1943, 
Ray and Dutt, N.K. Dutt, who later became professor and head of chemistry in Oregon chemistry from 62 to 1973, they proposed that it is not necessary for such stable complexes to suffer one into dissociation. It, it may occur also by rotation of these rings. For example, in the case of tris complexes, one ring may move down simultaneously, one ring move up. And when they have, and the 51, and to an angle of 45 degrees, you get a symmetrical intermediate. So it is like this. It is like this. You see, this gives a symmetrical intermediate. A further onward movement gives the enantioma. So again, you see, again, further movement. This is symmetrical. And this is the enantioma, and this is the other enantioma. Now, in 1958, Professor John Baylor proposed another mechanism of racemization, twist mechanism, in which all the things, all the three rings are twisted. You see, a, an octahedron is a trigonal antiprism. A 60 degree rotation of one half of the molecule with respect to the other half gives a symmetrical structure and further rotation gives the, the conformation, the conformation of the other isomer. Now this is can be demonstrated by this model. You see, this is one. Just see this. This is one. Then this is this is this is one conformer. And this is the other component. I think this is clear. Now, subsequent work, another twist mechanism was proposed later by Sievers and, but uh, that is uh, has not gained any popularity like the Baylor twist or the Raider twist. Uh, now, I, I, sh I should mention one thing that they, Radar twist, although in the original paper it is fully written, name is fully written Priyada Ranjan Rai and Nihar Kumar Dutt. Many of the foreign authors have misquoted this reference as PC Ray and NK Dutt and believe that this was a contribution of PC Ray. Only in John Peller's comprehensive book on coordination chemistry, the, uh, the correct reference is given. Even in the Wikipedia, the reference given is P, P Ray and Nkelat, and they mentioned that the, the, the radar twist is in, uh, in, uh, in memory of Professor of Prabhu Chandra Rai. This is, you see, it is uh, when Basolo Pearson's book on mechanisms of reactions of metal complexes appeared, the first edition in 1958. I had the op opportunity of going through their manuscript because I was then doing postdoctoral work there. I pointed out the errors. In the first edition, they made the direct citation P. Ray and Nkedat. But unfortunately, the second edition, again, it is P. C. Ray and Nkedat, which means this that many of the authors have not looked into the original paper, have just cited the reference as cited in some editors' uh, textbook or literature. Anyway, now, Based on experimental evidences, it is known that either of the two may operate in, in for the racemization of these complexes. For example, Gilgis and Fay showed using an unsymmetrical chelating ligand, this benzoyl acetonate cohort, that 80% of the reaction is by red or twist and 20% is by better twist. Because the reason is that for an unsymmetrical chelating ligand, a twist complex can have fact-made geometrical isomers 
and each of these will have a pair of enantiomers, D and L. Now, according to P ray, ray dot twist mechanism, there cannot, there, 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 there has to be fact mirror isomerization along with racemization. But in the Baylor twist, there will be no fact mirror isomerization, only racemization. But in another investigation, which I carried out in 1984, while I was in John Baylor's laboratory as a visiting scientist on a uh, Fulbright assignment, I studied the racemization of the cis dichlorobisethylene complexes of cobalt and chromium in the solid state. At a temperature of 150 to 180 degrees, they undergo racemization without any cis to trans conversion or no conversion of trans to cis state. This can be explained only by the radar twist, not by the beta twist. For example, in the radar twist, You see, you see, the radar twist, one, one, this will be the cis. This will be the structure of the uh, cis dichloro. If the radar twist, the assimilation will take place and cis will remain cis. Cis will remain cis. This is another conformer and this is the other conformer but the groups remain so it is cis, no cis to trans conversion takes place. While in the, on applying the same to the Baylor twist, well, there will be, this is a conformer, this is another cis, this is another cis, and the further rotation gives the is the trans. Trans, I will show again. Cis, this is one configuration for the cis. One cis configuration. This is another cis configuration. And this is trans configuration. So, since no cis trans interact in conversion takes place, it means that the reaction occurs exclusively by the radar twist in this system. <clears throat> Next one. Ethyl dibigoronic complex of silver three is another is very salient contribution. From its formula and from its diamagnetism, we naturally inferred, which is a, it should be a D8 like nickel three square planar structure. Subsequently, structure was determined by Kuntur, published in Nature, and that has proved the, the square planar structure. It's a beautiful um, uh, orange red colored uh, complex, and the most stable, stable silver complex, three, a third a tribal silver complex known so far. This is the structure uh, determined by Exeter. I'll say there are four nitrogens. Now, this is most of Now, unfortunately, now the subordinate stability was studied by Dishan and then Ghosh. He was a spice research agent, then became a professor at University of Washington. Dishan, I've already mentioned. They showed the thermodynamic stability. My student, Rupen Banerjee, who died recently, who was a professor at Jalpur University, established that it's kinetically also inert, that is, it reacts at a very slow rate. Next. Now, in this connection of the silver wagonite, I, I need to mention that in the fourth edition of Cotton Wilkinson's Advanced in Organic Chemistry, the original reference of Ryan Chakraborty is given for the preparation of the compound that this, right, this is given. But, 
and there is this is this is really very astonishing anyway next done another important case of civilization of a less familiar oxygen state is the nickel complex of paraiodate it is a beautiful light violet colored powdery crystal passed by ray and b sharma b sharma became a senior scientific officer at the national chemical laboratory pune he did other work also but anyway and this is also the most stable complex of nickel for so so far monocerais have already said made stable bicarbonate complexes of manganese 3 and manganese 4 at the association laboratory another important work was homogeneous precipitation now it is known that in the separation of metals by precipitation method in the conventional way the precipitate always carries some of the soluble constituents of the solution as coprecipitate which is unavoidable for example if you have you precipitate iron and nickel iron you precipitate with ammonia there will be some contamination of nickel and this can be avoided by what is known as homogeneous precipitation that is here the precipitating reagent is generated in situ and this they did by taking hexamethylene tetramine which by slow hydrolysis in water under releases ammonia and this homogeneous precipitation method gave a more cleaner separation of aluminum and iron from the basic bivalent metals manganese zinc copper and nickel pass by ek chattopadhyay you know, who was later in the alabad university uh, formation of thiosulfuric acid isomerism that was also established now he, this he did in a very novel way You see, thiosulfate of pentacyano covaltic acid was made in two different forms. One was yellow, and the other one was red. The yellow one, a solution of the yellow one, on in 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 on warming in on warming equal solution on warming evolves. So, form sulfuric acid and evolves. No, the sorry, the red one. The red one, on warming the solution, forms sulfuric acid and hydrogen sulfide gas, and that shows that the higher sulfuric acid was just that this was the S S. And I link a isomer, and so the thiosulfuric acid that was released is SH, and now there is a H and SH is removed, and SO3 with water from sulfuric acid. This is the so red variety leads to an isomeric acid thiosulfuric in C2, which has the SH bond, SSH bond. On the other hand, there is a yellow variety. Which are warming, form sulfur dioxide and precipitate sulfur. 
which means it was rebonded so that the sulfuric acid, the thiosulfuric acid generated in C2 had this structure. And this by this loses the sulfur, SS bond sulfur as sulfur, and H2SO3 sulfuric acid breaks down to sulfur dioxide in water. Using radioactive iodine, this was another contribution. He showed the equivalency of all the metal iodine bonds in tetra iodometallates formed by mercury, lead, and bismuth. The iodates of these metals are insoluble. They dissolve in ammonium iodide. They used ammonium iodide in which iodide was converted into a radioisotope by neutron irradiation. And on, according to Werner's theory, therefore, in mercury iodide, when it dissolves from IgI4, Ig, two iodines are bonded by primary valency, two by auxiliary valency. But the valency are surely identical because when they are, it is again, again, it is broken by dilution. The mercury iodide, which is precipitated, originally it was inactive. That also carries some activity, which means that when the uh, breaking takes place, it makes no distinction between the primary and auxiliary wells. This was done in collaboration with the strategy at Bosch Institute. They also developed a mechanical method of making a cobalt isotope by chemical. They developed a new volumetric method as to mercury oxide, dissolving into thiosal, sodium thiosulfate. Alkyl is released, which is titrated, and that gives the mercury oxide content uh, contamination in, in a mercury salt. Ray and co workers also insist the nature and constitution of heteropolis acids of niobium and tantalum formed by paraiodate and iodate, which is done by Dishen. I have mentioned here, Dishen earlier. And similar studies were made on the isopoly molybdates and isopoly tungsten by other people. Next. Complex of rhenium with four with oxygen donor collating ligands were prepared in pure form. No such complex compounds were known earlier. And vanadium four was stabilized by bigonite bilateral energy. He migrated to USA as a faculty member, but died prematurely. Next. Complexes of salt silver too were similarly stabilized with pedinic carboxylic acid by B energy. And, and his work on chemistry of silver to silver three was published in a review in the Proceedings of the Indian National Science Academy. Some of his other workers were. Nukuleshwar Kundu was in the National Cancer Institute, Calcutta, then a professor at the University of Dakota for 18 years and returned in 1984. Uh, K.K. Dato, R.K. Dato, he was also at the National Cancer Institute. Then B.C. Prokastro, who was at the Shah Institute of Nuclear Physics, and A.K. Mukherjee, he died prematurely. He did his PhD work in the Pali Laboratory and joined association as a research scholar when Professor Ray came in, and, but he died prematurely in 1955. He was only a senior to me. Uh, well, uh, I, uh, <clears throat> I would appeal to the director, present director, that whatever information available in the website of the Institute about not only inorganic chemistry department, about the physical chemistry department, organic chemistry department, are factually correct and complete. Because at present, in the list of alumni, one finds only names of those who joined in 1973. But I said, as I said before, I happen to be the first alumnus of the department and the first to submit my DSC thesis in 1967, followed by Dr. S. N. Poddar, who was later 
professor, reader and professor, he also be submitted DSC. These are the two people, as far as I know, who have received DSC degree for their work with the association. In, in, in physical chemistry, Professor Shanti Ranjan Pali headed the physical chemistry department from its inception in 48, when the association was in Tuten Bogota and retired in 68. He had, he was a very reputed polymer chemist of international fame, and his love for the association was so much that when he was offered the directorship of the National Chemical Laboratory, he declined and preferred to stay in the association as professor. During the last few years of his career, he worked on non-faradaic electrolysis, where he showed that if water having a left light concentration of one millinormal is electrolyzed, there is generation of hydrogen oxygen at both the electrodes. And using a U-shaped, W-shaped uh, electrolytic cell, he found that the gas mixture is also emitted in the intermediate region. In the case of organic, but there is no mention of his name, no mention of the students, many students who got their PhD under his supervision, who held positions of responsibility in the national international field. And another characteristic of Professor Palit was that he did all that was possible with his means to help the younger generation that they may thrive better and get them as, uh, get established uh, uh, in, in their career. In fact, I also received a lot of help because there's a lot of problem which I don't want to say when I was in the second phase of my uh, career as a faculty member, as a leader from 64 March to August 70, uh, because the financial position was much better than what it was when I was research officer, but um, the, the then head of the department was anything but uh, generous for my needs. Uh, at that time, of course, the, the then director, Professor Kedar Shurmanuji, and the then registrar, Mr. Asian Shen, helped me a lot. And also, I received a lot of help from Professor Pali. For organic chemistry, there is a mention that it started with S.M. Mukherjee as professor and P. Bhakti as research officer. And then P.C. Dutta took over. But there is a mention of the number of people who got PhD under Professor P.C. Dutta. One of them was Usha Ranjan Khatak, who became professor and even director before his retirement. I hope that the director will take steps that whatever information available is factually correct and uh, complete. Now, not only the in the list of alumni, we find names from those who joined from 72, 73 onwards. The list of faculty, our previous faculty, that is an empty blank space, both uh, for all these three departments, inorganic, organic, and physical chemistry. Uh, I, th I think. This is not at all desirable. Anyway, uh, I had a, I intended to say a few, few things more, but I have already uh, taken one, and, one hour and 20 minutes. So I will stop here. Again, paying my uh, homage uh, to my Guru Dev, because I sincerely believe whatever little I have achieved in life, I could achieve in my life was to his due to his blessings and benedictions. My relationship with him was far beyond that of a teacher and a taught. It was more like a guru shishya relationship of ancient India. Thank you. Uh, thank you, sir. We are so much privileged uh, to get to hear from you. And uh, all the, uh, the, the misses that you have just mentioned that we will try to correct those things in our, uh, in our record. And uh, we'll also try to visit you, myself and Professor Pine, as early as possible once they get permission from you. And uh, But I request uh, Professor Pine that if some of our uh, the, uh, colleagues and friends that have joined today, if they want to uh, interact uh, with Professor Panerjee personally.
আস্তে আস্তে করে করে বলো ডিউরিং So as you know that Professor Banerjee has little difficulty in hearing. So if you can, um, if you have any comments, could you please write it down in the chat box if you want to interact with him. And um, one of our uh, technical personnel is sitting beside him and you can actually uh, read it. Uh, and then we would like to uh, hear from Professor Banerjee. <laughs> শুনছি <laughs> P. Ray is one of the authority to review the history of Hindu chemistry right. written by Acharya Rai. And I think uh, Professor Banerjee, our, our great teacher, uh, Banerjee, uh, sir has not mentioned it. If sir can, uh, uh, can sincerely tell us something about that part of the activity of P. Ray. Um, Asis. তুমি একটু স্যারকে বলো যে প্রফেসর প্রিয়দরঞ্জন রায়ের লেখা হিস্ট্রি অফ হিন্দু কেমিস্ট্রির উপর বইটা সম্পর্কে যদি উনি কিছু বলেন তুমি একটু স্যারকে বলে বুঝিয়ে মানে একটু কাছে গিয়ে বল প্রভুল <laughs> on history of hindu chemistry in 1956 as per re, re, decision of the indian council of the indian chemical society professor rai has revised and updated this history of hindu chemistry into chemistry which was published in a new name as chemistry in ancient and medieval india this change of name was fully justified because the joins and the buddhist also made very substantial contribution to the development of chemistry in ancient india in the first century ad the joins proposed the theory of chemical combination in which they visualized that combination takes place between atoms 
which differ in the intensity of their properties. This is very similar to the concept of electronegativity or Linus Pauling of 1932. Then the most famous metallurgist of Nagarjuna was a Buddhist. In the ninth century AD, he succeeded in making, preparing brass by smelting together zinc and copper ores and got a golden like material, which was brass obviously. And he was also succeeded in, uh, in, ex in uh, extracting zinc from <laughs> calamine in the ninth century AD, which in Europe could not be achieved before the 18th century. So because of these contributions of the non-Hindus, the name change of name from history of Hindu chemistry to history of chemistry in ancient and medieval India was fully justified. But unfortunately, there are some I have seen who have criticized Professor Rai unnecessarily for changing this title. But without change of this title, the, it, would be a, a, it would be factually totally incorrect. Now, the Indian Chemical City published this book in 1956. There is mention of this in, uh, in even journals like Chem the Journal of Chemical Education. But unfortunately, some years ago, it has come to my notice that a publishing house in Varanasi is printing a copy of this book and selling this. Same name, same title. And as far as I know, there is no decision of the council so far. There is no formal decision of the council so far that, of, that any right of authority is given to them and the society is not getting any financial benefit from the sale of this book. I, I pointed out this to your predecessor, but nothing happened, no action was taken. So I suspect there is a, there is a suspicious deal with someone who has handed over a copy of this book and allowed this publisher to read. And if you are really interested in some, in, in, the, in, the, in, the, in the society, then you should take steps, find out under what authority they are publishing this book. And if they have no authority, must take appropriate steps. Otherwise they have to pay proper financial return for all that they are doing for the last few years. This is an excellent book in which there is a systematic presentation of the developments through the ages, starting from the Vedic period up to the middle of, uh, middle of the, uh, 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 up to the middle age, the end of the, the 16th, about 14th, 16th century. Even sulfuric acid India has the claim that sulfuric acid was first prepared in India at least 500 years before it was, its, its preparation started in Europe. Now, I, uh, I gave a similar report, uh, the information I got from this source and other sources, uh, Mr. Eshen Sen, who was the registrar of the Indian Association of Earthing Altitude Science, published his two-volume Vigyane Ritihash, which won him the Rovindra Puroshkar. That is also an excellent treatise on the developments on mathematical, physical, chemical, and biological sciences in ancient periods in the Asiatic and European countries. I'll see, based on all these information, Ramakrishna Mission Institute also has a publication. Uh, when Calcutta University invited me to deliver the uh, uh, Hashi Memorial Lecture, which was instituted by a doctor in memory of his mother. I spoke on chemistry, development of chemistry in ancient medieval India and its impact on medicine, where I, where I took a lot of material from these, these sources. I will again appeal to you that since you are the secretary, you should take steps against this 
खोजार चेस्ट कर प्रश्न सौभिक रयन बनार्जी रायल You see, acetyl acetone has in a CH3 groups on both ends. In the benzoyl acetonate, it is phenyl and methyl, phenyl one and methyl one. So it is an unsymmetrical chelating ligand. For unsymmetrical chelating ligand, you can easily make and model and see that they can exist in the isomeric, geometrical isomeric forms, back and mer. That is one, two, three isomer and one, two, six isomer as they are called. And each of these isomers has a pair of enantiomers. That is delta and lambda. Now, according to Rader twist, if Rader twist is applied, then there will be racemization. Along with that, there will be FACMER interconversion also. So, if you start with the FAC delta. You will get fac mer delta lambda as a racemic mixture. That is possible only by Rayla twist. Rayla twist won't lead to this fac mer isomerization. So from the product analysis, they established that 80% reaction was by Rayla twist and the rest 20% by Rayla twist. I've already mentioned this. बंद कर रेखे I have already given the references of the UV spectrometric work. I have given the references of the crystallographic work. You consult those references, and you will see how this has been determined. And there is, of course, chemically the bond has to be from the nitrogens because there is no other donor donor site. All the donors, possible donors, are nitrogen in this world. So nitrogen donation is unavoidable, but anyway, from uh, regarding uh, these details, if you look into the crystallography board and you see you see what you want, you see that yes. bicarbonate is carbon, hydrogen, nitrogen. The hydrogens are all bonded to nitrogen. I want the bicarbonate slide. This slide, I will show you the slide again. Please, I will show you the slide again. Bicarbonate. आशीष के बोल दो जब परमिशन चाहिए मैं क्या बोलूँगा बोलूँगा आशीष जी बोलो हमने बोलूँगा 
era por ahí. Dale, era que, era que. Era que. Era que. Ah, era que. Ah, oye, oye. Entra. Una vez yo sé el barrio, otra charla. Otra charla, no, no, a ver, está bien. Ah. You see, there is no other donor side except nitrogen. The question is whether the two NH or, or NH2 are bonded. Now, this, this has been established that there are NH2, NH2, NH2. Ray said that the hydrogens are with this, and these are deprotonated. There is no other donation side. So it has to be an hydrogen donation. What else is possible? Okay, thank you all. Um, I think it's well past one and a half hour. Uh, we should stop now. And now I would like to invite Professor Chakraborty to close this uh, presentation. So I think this formally we can uh, close the uh, today's talk here because it is difficult for uh, Professor Banerjee here to listen that uh, what uh, we are talking here. So, and I also thank you very much for attending this lecture. And uh, I also invite you to join in the future webinars that we are going to conduct in the same series. So, thank you very Many much. Many thanks for your... Thank you. Thanksgiving. Uh, but it was a pleasure on my part to speak on Professor Rai, because this is probably my last opportunity, as I said, to pay my homage and obeisance to him. Okay. So thank, thank you, you for the invitation. Thank you, sir. Thank and you. Thank you that you, you remembered me when you said in your first mail that I taught you, uh, I gave lectures in your class on ligand field theory and spectra of metal complexes. That shows him. And of course, Pine is, of course, happens to be a grand pupil of mine because <laughs> he, uh, he did his PhD under Falguni, who was one of my students. And Falguni also keeps in touch with me. Whenever he comes to Calcutta, he never fails to meet me. But many of my other students do not. <laughs> Another student was Vivek Chattopadhyay who started research while I was at the association, then shifted with me to the university college. He died only recently. He used to come regularly. But Falguni never fails. He always comes. Whenever he is in Calcutta, he gives me a call and then comes personally to meet me. And so Pine is my grand pupil. <coughs> Just as I am the grand people of Bhulo Chandra Rai. Bhulo Chandra Rai. So, so uh, are you from uh, Germany? Yeah. Yes, from yes. Germany. Yes. Yeah, okay. um, Ashish. Yes, sir. Ek tu share ke bolo je Professor Chakraborty aur ami amra pore ek bar unar time niye unar sathe kotha bolle unar samay niye amra ek bar unar bari te jabo. Sir, Professor Chakraborty, Mane, the director, sir, our fine sir, for a good time, me, Apna Barita, as you can have not You are most welcome. You are most welcome. Thank you. Thank you, Thank sir. You. Thank you. You are most welcome. It will be a pleasure meeting my student and grand pupil. Very most. The grand pupil has already developed a bald head. <laughs> Yes, <laughs> like me, he has developed a bald head. Okay, so How many days? Just give me a call the previous day. Sure, sure, sir. Definitely. Okay, thank you. So, okay, so we are closing the this program here, sir. Okay. Ashish. Hello, oh, thank you, Professor Chakravorty, Director of Association for giving this chance to hear the class teaching of our teacher, our teacher, this, uh, Professor Benerjian. He used to that model when I was in the classroom. That I just I remember.
সিমিলার মডেলস মেড বাই ইন দি ইউনিভার্সিটি কলেজ অফ সায়েন্স ওয়ার্ক শো অলসো বাট দে গট লস্ট সো আই গট দে মেড এগেন ইন দি বোশন শো দে আর ভেরি কনভিনিয়েন্ট উইদাউট দিস ইউ ক্যান ডেমোনস্ট্রেট দি রেড অফ টু ইস অফ দ্য বেলার টু ইস স্যার বিইং দ্য স্টুডেন্ট অফ লাস্ট ব্যাচ অফ ইওর পোস্ট গ্রাজুয়েট টিচিং I have also used to I have also used to see these models in the year 1993 <laughs> আর এইসব যন্ত্রের মাধ্যমে এইসব Thank you.